at what it is, Jacob Harrison one more again. I wanted to take the time to make a custom leather shoe tutorial that will show you everything you need to know in one place so you guys won't have to go back and forth to all these different places. You can just play my video, make your custom shoes, and be good to go. So one of the biggest questions people ask me is if I can just put all of the materials you need in one place. So I'm going to list them at the beginning of the video and then as I go through you'll find out what they're for. You'll need one glass container, a few cotton balls, some nylon brushes, like acrylic brushes, they just need to be soft, a matte finisher or the gloss finisher if you want it to be shiny, a sock or a rag to apply the finisher, um, a cup of water for um, thinning out your paints, some Angelus paint, you can't use any other paints besides Angelus or Soul Junkies paints, but they're basically just Angelus paints. Um, your leather shoe, of course, and a prepared design, which is very important. Before starting anything, you need to make sure you have your design in mind. It would be pointless and even counterproductive to prep areas that you don't need to paint. You can check my Photoshop tutorial for one method of custom design preview production. Before you paint anything, you're going to have to prep the shoe. Prepping is the most important part of the whole entire process. Even though you're holding a pair of leather shoes in your hands, you're not actually touching the leather. It's important that you get down to the leather though, because the paint you're going to be using is made to chemically bond with the leather. There's a layer of wax over the leather which provides the color, sheen, and protective surface for your shoes. This will have to be removed before you start painting, because it simply won't work unless you remove it. You'll need some kind of deglazer. There's nothing that works better than pure acetone, and luckily it's extremely cheap. You'll also need something to apply the acetone in order to strip the factory finish. I use the cheapest, thickest cotton balls I can find. I do this because I want to ensure the safety of the leather. As I mentioned, prepping is more important than painting on leather shoes. If your leather is not prepped well, it won't matter how good of an artist you are. The paint either will not stick or it'll peel if you try to wear them. If your leather is prepped well, it will greatly help you in your painting, especially if you're not a painter. So you want to make sure that you're doing it right. I place five or six cotton balls in a glass container and I pour the acetone on top of them. It's very important that you're using a glass container because it will melt right through the plastic. You also want to make sure you're wearing a glove on the hand you'll be handling the acetone with. It burns the skin and melts any lacquer, so try not to spill it on surfaces that have like a finish on it if you're painting on a wood desk or something like that. Compact all of the cotton balls, push them all down, and add another cotton ball or two if you've poured too much acetone. You want them to be thoroughly soaked, but they should not drip if you squeeze them. Next you can begin rubbing the wax off of the leather. Be careful, once you take the finish off there is no way to reapply it. So only prep the areas you want to paint. The way I prep is as follows. I rub firmly with the cotton ball a few times, and once the wax begins to come off pretty easily, I scratch lightly with the fingernail on my left hand, easily exposing the leather underneath. You don't have to use your fingernail, you can use other rough surfaces, I've heard of people using things like magic markers, but you can also just prep really hard with the cotton ball, it works just as well. When working on color shoes, if the leather is not gray underneath, you'll have to look really hard to see if you're making progress. On Nikes, there are tiny pores on the leather, and once you get down to the point that these are gone, you may be at the leather. The leather feels different than the wax, not necessarily rougher, just different. You'll be able to tell. Just make sure that you're switching out your cotton balls often, as the melted wax may be too saturated on the surface of the cotton and just smearing across the shoe. You can also dip Q-tips in acetone, or what you Euros call cotton buds, to get into those hard to reach corners. Once you're prepped and ready to go, you can start painting. Feel free to draw anything on your shoes with a pencil first. It's not going to affect the paint in the end. While painting, you'll be able to tell if you didn't prep well enough if the paint beads up. That means there's a little wax separating your paint from the leather. And that's why prepping is mandatory. The wax prevents it from sticking. Even if you were to paint on top of the leather and get it to dry there, it won't be bonded. It'll just be sitting on top of the wax. It'll peel at first crease. So make sure you're properly prepped. The problem most people have with the painting process is that they're too impatient to use the necessary high volume of thin layers. Thick layers look gloppy. Too few thin layers look streaky, so you'll have to use a soft brush to pull the paint across the surface evenly. I suggest dipping your brush in water first when using paint like white or black, as they have a lot of pigment and often get thick. Wait about five minutes in between each thin layer. Also, if you're not a painter, note that you'll need to pull the brush rather than push it. If you slip up and get some paint somewhere you don't want it, you can get a dab of acetone and it'll take the mistake right up. 
Also, if you get paint on an unprepped panel or on the midsole or on a piece of leather that's already been painted, you can usually just lick your finger really quick and wipe it up and it'll come right off. Take note as well that painting any color on a dark surface will need a layer or two of white first. Yellow and red usually need a layer of white paint first, even when you're painting on a light surface. Once you finish painting, you may want to put a finisher on your shoes. Some will want this to reduce the shine, some to increase the scratch resistance. In any case, it's not absolutely necessary. The paint will not come off once it is dried and bonded, and water should not mess them up unless you're like scrubbing them or something. The paint can be scratched off, just like the factory finish that comes on any pair of shoes can. But if your shoes were prepped well, you'll have no problems. Like Mizzy says, as long as you're not playing soccer in the shits. But even if you are playing soccer in the shits, and they're prepped well enough, and you put a finisher on them, they should still be good. They should be fine in the rain, with or without a finisher, and you can clean them by lightly scrubbing them with water. Once your paint is fully dry, apply your matte finisher, or gloss finisher if you want a lot of shine, to a sock or a rag, and simply wipe it across the surface of the shoe evenly. You can do this a few times, get a few layers on there, just wait a minute or so in between each layer of finisher. You can get it on the midsole on unpainted panels, it's not going to damage them. As long as it's covering the entire panel and not dripping, you're using a good amount. And now you should be good. Lace them back up and you're done with the pair of custom shoes. Now feel free to post a video response to this video and I'll watch it and let you know what I think. I'm always down to check out new art. And hopefully other people watching this video will check out the video responses as well. I'll be posting more tutorials on more specific techniques and canvas shoes and other things like that in the near future. As well as redoing my how to prep tutorial, physically showing you how to prep the shoes. But um, you guys can favorite this video because it pretty much has everything in there that you need. So if you have any more questions, feel free to email me. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh. yeah. Oops, almost missed the beat. Too busy moving my artistic feet that I got from my man Jay Patterson. Ain't nobody making custom kicks that look as fat as him. Take a pair of your older sneakers and I'll turn them joints into some Mona Lisa's. And he's eager to show and teach you how to do it yourself. Grab some cotton balls off the shelf and some acetone to get the wax off. It becomes a canvas once all that's off. Hats off to a true life artiste. Jacob Patterson, subscribe, he's a beast. When you walk down the street, you gotta have art on your feet. These are so much more than sneakers, baby.